set out to shine a light on Brooklyn home shops. And after visiting, as Judy said, um, more than 30 shops and I think uh, over 150 prints and artist books. Um, one of really the buzzwords, of, the buzzwords that we just kept hearing over and over was collaboration. And um, collaboration both within the walls of the print shop between artist and printer, and for Brooklyn really extending beyond <coughs> those walls into the printmaking community at large and in Brooklyn, which is a vibrant, growing, thriving community. Um, for tonight's panel, we're going to focus on the spirit of collaboration that exists between the artists and the printers in the shop. And um, we'll start out with some questions, hopefully spark some lively conversation, and then we'll leave some time at the end to open up questions to the floor for you all. Um, I'm so pleased to have this incredibly esteemed panel here. I welcome you all, and I'm going to do some introductions. Um, so you all know who's on the panel. I'll start all the way at the end with um, Jacqueline Humphreys, who's a painter and based in New York City. And I just recently found out she has um, her studio in Redwood, Brooklyn. Her large-scale canvases challenge traditional notions of gestural abstraction using various strategies of intervention. She's had recent solo exhibitions at Stuart Chief Modern Art in London in 2018, Queen of Tally in New York in 2017, Survey of her work at the Carnegie Museum of Art in Pittsburgh, which traveled to the Contemporary Art Center in New Orleans in 2015. Jacqueline's work was included in the 2014 Biennial and is in the permanent collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Whitney Museum of American Art, the Guggenheim Museum, and the Metropolitan Museum of Art, just to name a few. An upcoming exhibition of new work will be held at the Dan Clayman Art Institute in Bridgehampton this summer. Um, Next to Jacqueline, we have Andrew Mockler, who founded Jungle Press, a fine art publisher of prints and multiples in Greenwich Village in 1994. He moved to Brooklyn in 2002 and has had print shops in Dumbo and Greenpoint before settling most recently in Gowanus. He specializes in stone and plate lithography, but also offers etching, woodcut, and monotype at his shop. A painter and printmaker in his own right, Andrew began making prints as a high school student and worked during college for Herb Fox, a tamarind trained lithographer in Boston. He received his MFA from Yale when he trained with Richard Bryan and Andrew Factory. Andrew has collaborated with a varied group of artists, including Michael Mazur, Jared Snyder, and Paul Eisenman, and of course with Jaffa. Um, next to Andrew, we have Rob Swainston who founded Prince of Darkness with Doug Bennett in Williamsburg, was Williamsburg Loft in 2006, and has continued to run the shop on its own since Bennett's departure in 2008. Rob received an MA from Central University in Budapest before completing his MFA at Columbia University in 2006. There, he studied woodcut with Gregory Amanoff and Natalia with Thomas Wu, while gaining invaluable experience working at the Leroy Neiman Center for Print Studies and printing thousands of prints as part of his own body of work. In the shop ride, Rob provides artists with a variety of access to print media and specializes in layering different techniques and integrating new digital technologies with older print processes. He's produced prints with a variety of uh, very Rossford artists, including Miriam Nahn, Charlene Von Hale, Robert Gober, and of course, sitting right next to me, Dina Shutts. Um, Dina's a painter who lives and works in Brooklyn. Her work frequently depicts figures taking part in imaginative, sometimes unsettling activities or in impossible or contradictory situations. Dana's most recent solo exhibitions include Imagine Me and You at Pencil Gallery in New York, which just closed in February, Eating Adam Bombs at the Cleveland Art Museum, and Dana shows an exhibition of new work at ICA in Boston in 2017. Dana's work has also been the subject of a survey at the Museum of Contemporary Art Montreal in 2015 and featured at the Kessner Gachelle staff in Hanover in 2014. Her paintings can be seen in the collections um, of the Museum of Modern Art, the uh, Guggenheim, the Whitney, the Museum of Fine Arts Boston, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles, and the Norman Museum of Contemporary Art in Kansas. So, um, with this introduction's over, um, I'll start with 
with a question that I'll throw out really to everyone um, just to get the conversation going. And, um, feel free, I think it, it applies really to everyone. And the question really is, is how do you prepare for a first visit to the print shop? Um, for Dana and Jacqueline, do you have a particular direction or intention for the project before you get to the shop? And for Rob and Andrew, how do you prepare for an artist's first visit? To what extent do you familiarize yourself with the work? Um, do you have a few techniques to propose? Or when you all come together, is it sort of a you know, more collaborative discussion? Um, I was just going to say, I usually try to visit our studios so to find out what work is in progress and see how the work is beginnings, how, how the, the process is put together. So oftentimes it's kind of in the middle of uh, developing a body of work, um, you can kind of see the thought processes about, um, you know, techniques, layering, the drawing, how the colors working, um, and oftentimes the, the techniques um, then become kind of translated into the, the new print project. So that's kind of how I usually start. Yeah, we usually start with, you know, the paintings, right? Like I'm, I'm not the kind of print maker that will bring an image into the studio and, you know, like, let's make a print of this, but it's really about the ideas that are in the painting, you know, and this painter too. So, you know, we, we just have that painter painter conversation. And we go in the studio and just play, you know, just think about new ways that you can new kinds of materials to print on and you know it's it's fun. It's really it was really fun to work with and love to experiment and well and you also have quite a long history together. Didn't you start making prints with them in the mid nineties, I think? Mid nineties. Yeah. Yeah. So it was mostly lithography pretty much for the first couple of projects. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, using the same kind of, you were making kind of panel paintings when, at that point, and then pouring. Uh, so we made a kind of a, a panel print that had, you know, changes between each panel were kind of, um, kind of more subtle. And then um, as we, you know, the work grew uh, and we came back and worked on, um, I'm trying to remember, after 97. Then we started doing wood cuts. Right. So then wood kind of came in a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But we were doing wood cuts or monoprints off wood? We did yeah. monoprints off right. wood. So there, you know, there's a, a play between um, the object that stays the same and that, you know, the variations that you can make with different kinds of panel and paint. But they're, you know, with most of the projects since then have been um, you know, variables of an image and groups of models from, you know, a similar set of materials. Which are, we can, we'll talk a little bit more, we'll get the images up on the screen with the works that are in the show. That are in the show. Okay. Um, how did your sort of collaboration? I think I, I would come with usually a couple of drawings, drawings or, or a few ideas. Yeah. I don't know how they would. And we sort of drum on the table and we look at it and we try to figure out like which is the best way forward. I mean, I always like try to look at art, look at artists or people. Uh, I look at the, the processes of their engagement and look for analogies in print that maybe the artist doesn't necessarily know or there. Like some are really obvious, like, oh, you're using stencils, you should do this. Dana's like, um, I can't speak like you're working. Dana's like, you know, it's like incredibly, like, you know, complicated sort of uh, layering of colors and very sophisticated way in which, like, you sort of put colors together to sort of build something, which I think is very suitable for wood blocks and multi blocks and stuff like that. So we spend a lot of time like, working out colors once we get going with the image. and. At the same time, we're building the image. Um, I also always take all my own stuff off the wall because, like, well, but I always like feed it. Take it down. <laughs> <laughs> I always try to feed her because I don't think she needs to go. Too much meat. Keep her nourished. I, I, I come to Rob's 
when they eat all the food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, but that's what I always like about it, because Rob is such an incredible um, woodcut, like it's just, I don't know, like really ambitious woodcuts in, in, in your own work, and so I always find like it's very inspiring and, and uh, has different ways to uh, approach and image. So a lot of times it's like things that I haven't thought of. I think um, and and you're you know how to do these things, you know, or we have like really good solutions. Yeah, we'll look at something as a drawing and go, oh, we'll make a jigsaw block for this, and, yeah. and separate this like <laughs> this, and do that. You know, so we talk about it as we do it, and, and uh, you know, work on the image, but it's like. And you're a big and Jacqueline, you said that the um, prints really come out of the paintings, and you're both obviously painters, first and foremost, but I mean, is that sort of, do the paintings come first, the prints come after? I know for your work, Dana, I, I noticed that there have been paintings made first, and um, it's sort of variations on a theme with the prints. And I was wondering if you could sort of speak a little bit to that, sort of exploring either whether we an image, um, mark making in sort of different media, and how that how that sort of play moves from sort of the painting to sort of you know, graphic, graphic media. Well, I think it's it always it always changes because it's just a different translation. Um, so sometimes it's like um, try to work out an idea either in print or. Sometimes it's, it's the other way about. I think you can kind of know how something could work as an image and then try to use how it Especially with woodcut, I felt like it has a particular factor to it and, mm -hmm. and mark, and I felt like that was really um, different from how it would be the approach of being taking mm -hmm. as it um, talked about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that something that you similarly, I mean, whether it be through, I'm not sure to what extent, I mean, make drawings, to what extent make drawings, where you'll sort of, you know, rethink a work in, in different media, and if that is the case with you, know, you know, the that you're making. I don't really draw much, but, yeah. it, you know, like the, the prints, the paintings I was making were just these frames with other stuff going on. And, but you know, I, I think a lot about you know making a kind of robust materiality or physicality that has real presence, and that's a really hard thing to do in printmaking to make a, a gesture look really like meaty and, and, and thick, you know, things sort of flatten out. So you know, in these prints particularly, that's how we got to like you know physically altering the the wood, like by sort of fringing the edge of the jigsaw and like. Ripping up denim and printing off denim and you know, bringing things from the world that are known or recognizable and incorporating them into, you know, because of sort of third element and you know, color or form and, and this other kind of material reality. The, the great thing about prints is that you're doing it on paper, but you can, you're making an image of a surface, another surface that you're printing onto um, to paper, and it's like, you know, Woodcuts for that reason, and you can know, extend that. You know, woodcuts do um, on using fabrics and paper. Mm -hmm. um, how did you? How did the two of you respond, or how do you respond to sort of the collaborative process as opposed to working in your studio alone, sort of thinking out these ideas and then having someone in the, in, in the workshop? Is that difficult? Is it an easy transition for you? Um, I, I, I like it. I mean, because you get out of your own space and you, you know, your, I don't know, just your day is structured differently, but also the um, input. I, I think it depends on the relationship. And I mm -hmm. um, I'm so lucky that it's a good relationship. <laughs> so it feels like it's, it's, um, it's always. I, I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. and, but sometimes it is difficult because you, I think, especially with printmaking, you have an idea of what you think, it, especially when you first started making printmaking, you have an idea of what you'd like to do, and then it's not. So you 
easy to get there. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's actually what I was going to ask in terms of like the intent, you know, when you go with a particular project in mind and does it often veer off track? Do you come out with something different than, you know, what you thought you were going to do or what you thought okay. you were Yeah, yeah. 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 Now I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It would be boring if you got what you already have in your mind. Right. <laughs> it's like taking it out of your mind. But I mean, like the sort of collaborative or like the working in communities in the medium, it's impossible to have. Historically, the print shop requires all this equipment, all these tools, and you have to come together to work there. You can't go by your studio. So it's in the medium. It's, in, it's at this level. I mean, I'm not going to put it higher than a student shop or something, but it's in every level where it's just like a like this, but we're doing, but also in a very basic like print shop that you know, students share, or that's like, that's like or a blackbird or whatever, any of these things, you know. I mean, I've built a print shop largely for my own practice, um, but it's impossible to sort of maintain physically because of the money involved and the involved, so I have to share. It's like a necessity. It's a necessity or I'm not going to live in New York City. Right, right. So, like it's and it's in and in a way it's like it's good like you're in a shop and someone would be, there's always someone who's like well you know you tried it like this and you sometimes don't want to shut up right and like, but it, that's right. also a very good thing so yeah. everyone is like looking at each other's work and it's a collective problem solving yeah. yeah I mean just is actually a question I was going to ask both you and Andrew as um, artists in your own right how does that affect what you sort of bring to the project and I assume that you have you know, certain insight into to the work, not just in terms of making the prints, but in understanding the art of the first place. Um, the question you want to go first? Well, it affects it a lot. I mean, uh, you know, I'm primarily a painter and a drawer, but I also make my own prints. I always have kind of done both. Um, I really kind of crave uh, the collaborative aspect of working together because you have to really um, kind of bring all of that and also defer to what the artist is doing in a way. But it's very informative because you're actually learning a lot, you know, about how other people put things together, how they work and how their artistic brain is, you know, activated with this new <laughs> set of rules. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times everything that is introduced by the artist then becomes kind of part of that. You know, what your capability is when you're involved with either your own work or with the next artist that comes along. You know, so I really enjoy, you know, my own time in the studio when I'm, you know, in my own kind of meditative space in my own work. But I also, you know, really love to work with artists because you are really gaining, you're gaining a lot of information as well. Because it's the, you know, the place where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll reinforce that a little bit. Like, um, in the bio that you read of mine, you listed a few names of printers, but they're also artists that I worked with and I learned from. But I could say that the equivalent that um, the artists that I worked with in the shop, I've learned more from for my own work. Like, you know, from Dana, I learned how to, like, hold on, that's not exactly the right color. Like, for me, I just feel like. <laughs> What's it's red? Come on, you know, I'm just really excited about it. Right. And I learned this song, like, no, no, get it exactly right. You know, it's under it. And like from like the artist like Charlie Monhara, I learned another like you know set of like you know speed it up, slow it down, speed it up, slow it down, yeah. sort of set of processes. So like it all feeds back into my work, and I think it's only feeds back in the artist's work. So and it's complicated for printers often because printers lose sort of their own. I know with lots of master printers. Mm -hmm. That have lost their own sort of art in the process, and sometimes it's sad, and sometimes it's just like it is what it is because it's easier to work for other people. But um, um, this like back and forth learning from each other thing is like is the most is like one of the most frequent things that you can do. Well, I mean, it's it's kind of amazing because as a printer, you really have to be a chameleon in a way. I mean, kind of you know, the best shops are the ones that you know 100 percent give you know, put forth the artist's sensibility. And so I'm always amazed how you're able to sort of adopt and change and, and it's, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. There is, there is though also kind of a look, I mean, I don't want to say this, but there is, there is a, a kind of a gestalt of 
that shop. Like if you look at an artist who goes to different shops, you'll see a different scene. Mm -hmm. You know, the way that the prints are approached and it's refreshing. Mm -hmm. You know, to have a kind of a, a different take that the artist you know, brings in. You know, from, gets from the picture printer in a way. Um, I think it's really like the thing about printing, like, because I would never collaborate on my things. Like, I, I mean, if I would, it would just be some kind of like special project. But the thing about a print, print is that you're, you're work, you're both working on this thing that makes the thing, right? You, the plate makes the print. So that kind of, it, like, it, it sort of opens up this new space for collaboration. That's like a little more indirect, you know, like when you're both like. You know, the whole in the conversation, like, you know, like, you know, every time you pull up one end, like, you're thinking you know, about this, what about that? It really is, like, nice, you know, to be working on something you feel so much like that. Your attention is really focused on the thing that makes the print. Um, just to jump away a little bit from sort of specific print making, but what, this is really a question here to do a job on, but, um, in terms of your process of how you make your work in general, uh, you make both of your work comes from obviously very different placements and a different set of concerns, but it seemed to me in my reading that you share sort of similar starting point and that you have a set of conditions or limitations that you kind of work within. Um, can you talk about a little bit about that or process and you know, how that plays out in your work? And, um, those conditions that you can use or think, before you start. Yeah, I think it's a bit, it's, when you think about like ideas for, for subjects and it comes from language or, or, or trying to, um, and then re recently, when I'm working with friends, a lot of times it's like, how do you structure this idea, which is kind of abstract into this moment. Or, or, uh, whatever the training has going to be, the notions of paper, or, or, and there's also the limitations of media, mm -hmm. the media board, um, and the allow. So I think that it's, um, uh, yeah, I think that the, yeah. Do you, want to, do you want to talk a little bit about how you use the language? To sort of set up the narrative in? Yeah, well, I, a lot of times I'll like, come up with the, the titles, but not that it's a good title. <laughs> you know, but then it's like that. But then it's something that could begin to lend itself to do uh, of any. So I think that it, it, uh, I think that's how it all. I think that's how we can start. But I, I kind of like that it's, it's almost like a problem. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add anything about um, sort of how you set off in your work? And I mean, but the, the other thing about working with the printer in the print shop is that you're, you're not alone. You know, you're with someone, so you have to kind of come up with the goods. You know, it's, a, <laughs> it's a, like some kind of pressure there. And uh, so, you know, it's really important to start with something. You know, start somewhere. You can't start everywhere. So, um, you know, I got these prints. It was just this idea of this frame, or, you know, like altering the edge of the plate, and, and then, you know, then just proofing all these different things, and then beginning to put things together and bringing in new elements: the fabric, the paper. You know, the individual color that we used, and just kind of like mashing all those ideas together into the product. But yeah, I think it really helped. It's really important to have uh, the starting point you know, mm -hmm. in your mind. And again, that's something that comes out of Andrew and I in the process when the studio visit, where we talk about the possibility of what, what if this would really translate to print, and that would be to, and then just kind of go for it. Yeah, a lot of it's dependent upon the medium that you choose to make the prints from. So, you know, with gesture or painting, um, you have this kind of fluid ability to make marks um, that aren't qualified by this structural material that you have to be working from. So, you know, in some of these, you're trying to figure out a way of making gesture, the denim fabric came in. 
she was able to use the scissors and move things around um, in a way that's kind of analogous to you know, making marks or that kind of fluidity. We had tried doing like uh, liquidy things before in prints and we never got anywhere with it. So, you know, I think that was prior to these prints. And so that brought us to this point like, let's try to think about gesture in a different way. You know, the materials themselves are kind of expressing, yeah. you know, their, their nature to really relate to the interventions that you do. I mean, coincidentally, let's all of the work in the show by the two of you happens to be woodcut. And I knew both me and you know, worked in other print media as well, but I, I just wanted to have these on the screen as references and Dina's work is on the uh, right, Bird and Fruit from 2011, and Jacqueline's Untitled on the left um, from 2013. Um, how'd you land on woodcut? Um, I knew you both made monotypes first, but I mean, woodcut, one of the more direct mediums. It's, did you like the physicality of it? Cutting the block was a very sort of social process. And um, I love its warmth, you know. And I love also that wood comes with its own image, so you can just print out a piece of wood and you already have an image. Um, and it, so it's like a great place to start, you know, especially the moment printing. And, you know, in these print, not this print, so we, but actually in this print. Those little black circles, those are paper that we inked up and placed in there, and that gives it like a harder, colder feeling. You know, the fabric is sort of somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. If you want to maybe chat it out of it, and then we'll dive deeper into the work. Mm -hmm. I really like the expression. It's sort of like, it, it's sort of difficult. I like that it, it had this um, resistance to it so that the, the mark was very much on the tool and it's kind of by its production. Mm -hmm. so I like that. Yeah. I mean, it kind of does the interesting you're drawing with like a negative. You're taking away, right? like, which is the opposite of like most drawing processes that you draw. That you draw. And it also, you can start with like a really fluid drawing and a really open idea, and you can sort of choose some work that sort of reflects it a little bit. But then once you get this like kind of like quick first thing, you have to like slow down and really pay attention to what you're doing at the moment that you're carving it. And you have to make all these decisions in advance. Um, I'm carving because once you get that tools in your hand, you turn into just a fucking witch out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it. Right. So you need to really like you know limit the inputs of that moment that you're carving to be just about that thing that you're carving, and, and the net result ends up often being super interesting. You know, I mean, Dina for for bird and fur. I mean, was this the first wood kind of thing? The first or yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah.
I can sound like some dumb romantic thing about like a thing that's already in the room or, yeah. but um, there's a little bit of a bad that's in it, it's true. Mm -hmm. It's true, it does have a figure. Yeah, right. it's true. That's, you know, already a drama, like what you're talking about. Right. I think this is also pretty on the wall. That's what on, yeah. 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 Sometimes, yeah. you know, let's script a bit. Just comes off. <laughs> 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 also, like, between like fringe the edge of the jigsaw, like just all these splinters are everywhere. Yeah. You pick them out of the print, and, yeah. and the whole thing was just falling apart. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Right but we only do one. We only do one. Uh, so. <laughs> well, I, I'm just looking <laughs> at the two um, works by Jacqueline that are in the show, the two 2013 works. Um, can you walk us through? Because you already mentioned a bit about the process and what is actually, I mean, Roberta and I were sort of studying very closely on it. Which is the wood block, which is the denim. Talk about, you know, for, for people who haven't looked at it, talk about the use of the denim, why you brought it in, and, and just walk us through the process would be great. Well, talk about the actual prints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The print on the left is, it's a, again, a Luan, plate that we fringed with saw and then printed even that as a piece of denim that I cut holes into and then the, the frame is paper. Um, paper is great to print off because it gives you a really sharp edge. And you just like layer those things up and then print the whole thing. There you can print that one. Okay. No, it sounds right. <laughs> Well, there's a there's often when you have the, the wood that you are printing a goes from right right so you've got um, the kind of the bold first impression and then the goes print. I think maybe so the one was a ghost print. I think there was a ghost print and then we we inked uh, another plate. Well, but there's venom in the There is, yeah. but I think those things are cut out pieces that were laid onto the ghost. Print. Those were paper. I remember cutting out those little pieces of paper. Those were paper. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like so the dot, the, the sort the of forms are the dots, yeah. are paper. Well, not the big blue dots, but those little black ones are. Oh yeah. Closer right. To the so I'm thinking the lighter dots may have been what was the ghost print, and then the fabric surface that laid down, and then another one went over, so it appeared like on a dark ground because the darker. <laughs> the circles are holes in the denim. Okay, as you can see, <laughs> really great memory. Of what um, I think they're, they are the, the black. The black line is the is a paper strip, you yeah. know, which uh, which presented its own challenges because it wants to just <laughs> rain. Yeah, and also I remember you thinking of the denim too, and it's like. <laughs> yeah, the roller. Like, how do you how do you ink up this floppy it thing? And some of them had like threads coming out. Something. Yeah, it wasn't mm -hmm. glued down to anything, so it's oh. you know fabric. Right. And it was I had to kind of keep it from wrinkling. So for the the, the the sort of square within the square. Right. The base block where you see that that um, cut in edge is that. The woodblock? Yeah. And how are you going to get it? She's got a jigsaw. <laughs> <laughs> I, know she's, I know she knows how to use it. Right. But it looks you know, it's a little scary. A little scary. <laughs> and she's just going into the edge of the big one. You know, okay. very, it actually very took a really long time. It did. Yeah, because okay. it's that drawing. And then you've got you know, the cutout square, the denim. The frame. The frame. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of, you know, laid it on top of that. To and, then, and I just like to cut into it, like kind of made it, it's like slash fashion printing or something. Like, yeah. To literally yeah. make it really like fall on top of that. Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of amazing because when you look close at the print, you have all this embossing and the white from the threads that are coming through. I mean, yeah. all this kind of messiness in the details is really kind of remarkable. Some of those little threads are just very, like, like very, very, very particular. Right. And the play between sort of the gesture of the thread and the, the more kind of geometric um, use of the square, mm -hmm. it's, um, yeah, it just creates wonderful tension. The paper also is a kind of a heavy 
Somerset substantial paper mm -hmm. that limits me up and pick up all of that. So for the the um, lot that was jigsawed, so that was used repeatedly then for the for the sort of more closed form of the holes in the center. And then we did a third one also, which is has a little bit of a tighter square. It's not as gestural. So do they all use that same base block then? And then the denim? Uh, I think there were maybe two blocks. And there were some that we made just off the denim, I think. Right. But generally, that block was used. It may have been you know, turned you know, 90 degrees or um, and some of it, some of them have more layers than others. She also used paper stencils in a number of one, a number of them that um, created these kind of geometric elements um, with the denim. Mm -hmm. So there were more. There were maybe you know, fifteen. Or so. um, I'll switch ahead to show. Now, these two are part of the same. You were working on these as part of that same series. Yes. Do, do you want to talk a little bit? I mean, it seems like there's a you know, within the series, you sort of move from the square within the square. Some have this um, kind of frame within a frame. Others move away, like the one on the left, where you do away with that uh, frame, and the edge of the sheet serves more as the frame device. And these have more sort of strong angular cuts. Uh, I'm talking about the wood providing sort of an image or a gesture, and here you've got these really strong geometric. Um, shapes and gentlemen, do you want to talk about sort of how this all plays into the series as a whole? Yeah, it was just playing with these few elements of like the frame, the edge of the actual plate, you know, the square, and the frame within the square, and then, um, you know, the print on the left is just printed off denim. But there's, there's no, yeah. There's no wood in that one. And on the right, the frame is denim and also the triangle. And I think the, the long, skinny triangle is for paper. Paper, and then it's a different kind of wood that we used to kind of apply, you know, it's personal to get that more kind of thick color. Are the, these prints um, related to the paintings that sort of deal with that framed edge as well? Um, the paintings I was making in the time were, you know, most of them had in common is I would start with just like making a frame and the painting and the trees would occur within that. So that was sort of like the parameters of how I was working. Like you begin, you know, with the canvas, you put the frame in sort of as a way to sort of restate the object or the picture space, mm -hmm. and then things happen inside of them. Um, so I'm going to switch to uh, so Sleep Walker from 2016. I guess I wanted to bring this one up first, just following up on, on Jacqueline's work, which are all mono prints as well in that series. And, and this one, even though it's an addition, is a mono print. It's a mix of two layer woodcut. Well, it's a mix of, it's all woodcut, but the woodcut is done on, on the monoprint is done on the block, it's carved. So the line can, the monotype line can go, can go through some of this carved and not there and there and not there and then reappear on the other side. So it's a monotype that is done on wood blocks, not just on wood. Right, right. Okay. But so there's variation, each one has a different... There's variation, but it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of remarkable so how... Do we get that color, like the yellow... There's, the there's three blocks. And, the, the, was, yeah. and the yellow was like its own block. We didn't do any of type on. The red, the green, the blue, uh, all of that, all the brushy stuff was done on another block that was carved. But there was, it was carved out where the yellow is, and then interfered with the yellow and in a couple other places. And then there was kind of like kind of a key block that's the dark block that was printed at the end of the time. But it's like, I mean, I'm a little selfish because I've been doing the type 
crossover is a little bit that's okay, let's try this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really fun. It's yeah. super fun. Yeah. 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 Well, you had also made monotypes previously two palms, so yeah. I was wondering if that maybe played into it as well as... And I'd seen those ones, like, oh yeah, yeah. those are great, you should do some of those. Mm -hmm. They're very, they're very different. different. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but it's that you do get the, it's like the bush green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, how did you find, you know, being somebody who's obviously very interested in color, instead of mixing colors, sort of layering the colors that, did you enjoy that? Was it hard? I, I, was I think it initially, I found it hard, mm -hmm. you know, like the first, first press. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, and then I didn't have money to do too many things, yeah, I know. and I was like, I mean, you can do it with two friends. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but it, 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 but this was, I felt like there was a lot of freedom in, 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 in the direct. Yeah. Maybe, it, it, it was like, dang, it was just, um, uh, and then it was interesting that each, you know, each was different. Yeah. Okay, so, how, how many colors or blocks are in this one? Do you remember? Three blocks. Mm -hmm. And it took us, I mean, it took us, we brought a drawing that was pretty well worked out. Yeah. And then we split it up and then broke it into blocks and then carved the blocks. And then we just had two days of printing and we made like a hundred, you know, hundred forty, hundred fifty of them. It was just like me and Dana were on one press, like doing the monotype one, and I was just running and just kept getting back to it. And then, and then <laughs> her assistant and one of my assistants was immediately printing the other one on the top of it. And then I turned the back, and then the next day I came back and printed the final thing. That was, that was, that was, really it, was fun. it was just fun. It was just like it was the red, the green, and we just got like paint with money everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you had um, made a painting earlier of the yeah. same subject, yeah. larger. Yeah. So how did that? Um, was it tough to sort of translate it down or rethink it down into a sort of smaller format, or did you sort of just approach it as a completely new start, subject? Well, it started as a, it was a drawing, also that was more compressed. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a drawing. It was a drawing, and then a cartoon of the painting as the be a departure point. Yeah. So you start the painting, then a drawing, yeah. after the painting, and then the credit. Yeah. Yeah. And then back surgery. That you, you sort of answered or started to answer the question that I was going to ask about sort of an, an affinity with this print and German expressionist prints because it seems. Um, Certainly, a inspiration here. Yeah, I was looking at a lot of background in it. It was a very narrow, compressed spaces. It was a lot of mm -hmm. action, sort of structured. Yeah. So, the, uh, yeah, it was like a playing card or something. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, this one, I didn't, I wasn't able to find a painting that was related to, so I was just wondering in terms of sort of this compression of space and, you know, action in a small space that was related more to the, to the elevator paintings that you're making. Yeah. 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 I was thinking about, like, the space of a bed, as like a, But not, I mean, not, yeah. I didn't make these paintings. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Maybe for the best. Yeah. But, <laughs> I but I but I really like this subject. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I love this sort of she figured the two heads on the top of the bottle and then not quite being able to make out are they limbs or the hair, you know, there's just a lot of um, movement and animation that sort of take in the space. Um, 
Porque el ingeniero es incredible en short form drones. Es muy divertido. Sí, el ingeniero de drones. El ingeniero de drones, que es muy divertido. Pero es como, ¿qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso? Did this, did this one start out as a drawing? Yeah, I mean, they, this question's been come up a couple of times, like, where do you start? And it's one of the things, primarily, you don't always have to look, start with the proverbial, like, white canvas. It's like the medium, like, lends itself to, like, importing things in real fast. Like, as if the medium is the medium of reproduction, so it's, like, so quick. It's like you can start with a drawing and painting and move it in pretty quickly, and immediately, like, just as a starting point, like, you don't have to, don't have to Stay truly original. It's just like a place in, in which you can start to lay things out, and then you can work with what you have, and you can sort of like shift inside of that. It gives you a, a starting point, which is a really useful thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, to deepen Jackie's question, I mean, are there any ideas that you've taken away from printmaking, you know, whether process based or more conceptually in terms of seriality or repetition that you? that's come to inform work in the studio, the painting, you know, you sort of take away from prints and take back to the work, the primary work. Well, I like the idea of layers, for one, and also that, um, you know, making it <coughs> sort of forces you to organize, um, you know, your methods of image making in, in, a, in a certain way that, you know, it's, your you're sort of preconceiving things, right? It's, it's not about the, the kind of spontaneity that I think you can have sometimes. So, and, and actually the way I'm painting now is very close to some of the prints that we made. So I think it informs it in ways that are hard to define, mm -hmm. but that it's, it's always like, uh, it's sort of served as a reference when you're that, you know, how, how something gets made. You know, interestingly, when I was reading about how you make your paintings or you made some of those metallic things, I immediately, when you talk about them in very sort of working on like terms and how you sort of remove and scratch and wipe, you start to sort of start with something finished and then sort of take away. And I was thinking about printmaking and sort of mesotint and things like that when you start, you know, in ink surface and then work away to get the image. And so, it, you know, I, I thought that there was already a natural connection. So I, I, I was just wondering, uh, you know, which came first, but it seems like it, it's the thinking is informed in some way. About it. I mean, it's it's a, it's a different way of like you know of engaging with the material process. So, um, you know, it allows me to you know, you know like well, I did a bunch of prints with David many years ago that really directly influenced uh, a series of paintings that I made. And, you, know, you get ideas from the process because it's like, you know, um, you know, you can cycle through things pretty quickly, and um, it's you know, it's but it's not like drawing exactly. It's more process oriented. It's more like painting in the sense, like how to color and line all these things sort of combine together in an image, and and I find that printmaking is you know, it's just very close to painting to me. Although I was watching the crown print video, which I thought was great, it was not that new, but a series of prints that you made there. And I was wondering, because I knew that you typically don't draw for your paintings, but I saw you sketching away in a, in a notebook, and I was wondering, were you just sort of more formally working out, kind of, or what did it have nothing to do with that? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't remember. I mean, in those etchings that we made, we, we, I brought in a lot of stencils from the studio, and yeah. like, that's where we started. And, but actually, it was new to me at the time, so there was all this other stuff going on that yeah. I was just playing with the, you know, spit by, you know, I didn't know what all these things were, but you know, the thing I like about it is again, it's a, it's a very physical, um, you know, materials oriented way of making an image, you know, less than lithography, I find. Yeah. They're really altering the plates physically. Into, well, and also now sort of the newer imagery with the emoticons and using stencils and the document using stencils in the painting and, and the works we made at, at Crown Point. There is definitely a reciprocal sort of back and forth in terms of reproduced image and painted image. So, okay. Um, did you? Yeah, I'm going to add that sort of. If you know, maybe we can have, I mean, if, I mean we first started making these. 
thought I think that changed how it would be just in terms of thinking about the brush strokes mm -hmm. and building the paintings and this kind of uh, maybe treating the painting in all over treating it all over whether it like that it really is all built with brush strokes. I think there's something about coming where it comes to feel very locked in and mm -hmm. immediate and fresh. Mm -hmm. One of my paintings is like that. A while, a while back, I wanted to feel like it was all happening at once, and I think that, that was directly the point. Mm -hmm. um, Andrew and, and Rob, do you, do you feel, I mean, you sort of touched on this a little bit, but the, that your work or experience in the shop with the one artist can ever, or ever, affects your sort of experience with another artist that you sort of learn something on the fly with one, and Rob touched on this a little bit, that you then bring to, to someone else in terms of innovation for techniques that arise out of collaborative work? Yeah, I think definitely. I think that you have to kind of uh, rise to the occasion as far as when you're working with an artist, you know, as a printmaker, you have to be really along as far as you know, picking up on stuff you know, that they want or that just comes out of the material that you know, has to kind of seize that aspect of the work. Um, I find it really refreshing, you know, when I, I am working with an artist and something happens that I've never seen. Um, and I am surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's all a matter of being able to then uh, recognize it and uh, you know, observe, really experiment and then observe. And that's the most important part is to really look you know, at what's really happening and then um, to be able to synthesize um, the process that's observe because a lot of times when you're in the shop, you know, things are coming out and sometimes things work and sometimes sometimes they don't really work. <laughs> 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 like um, you know one artist wanted to use oil paint on the window stove and said, you know that's not <laughs> <laughs> just right. You know, and then he was painting the oil paint and sure enough the oil just went like oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like well, why did the drawing it's <laughs> not um, really a lithography, but you know, some kind of serendipity, you know, happens where something really refreshing comes out of the process that you you know you give the artist certain tools and then they use them in a different way. You know, and then they you discover something from that and then you can bring that along to the next. Um, I, I always love that kind of learning curve aspect of any kind of printmaking. There's just certain things that work, and there's, you know, like it takes a while to get to the things. Did finish. you say it most still? Most still don't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so true, you know. So it's kind of looking for that one yeah. thing that's yeah. working, yeah. and then it's yeah. going to take you on this journey, yeah. and then you just roll with it. You know. It's kind of a leap of faith. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's like printmaking. <laughs> you go for what you do, and you actually see it on the papers, you know, what you want it to be. So. Um, well, thank you very much for participating. And if there are any questions now, um, from anyone would be happy to take them. I think what Dan said about like, the all over look, the last thing we did is like, the entire thing worked on this once. Right. It's not the last thing that did. It's an all the last thing that's everywhere. Yeah. I have a question. I have a question. Each of the years have been each other. Oh, oh well, uh, I met Jacqueline at the Fine Arts Work Center in Provincetown. It's a residency program. It's a seven-month residency program uh, in Provincetown for ten visual artists and ten writers of a year from October to April. Um, and I was there in 1990-91, Jacqueline came as a visiting artist, um, and then five 
years later, I was I was opening up my own print shop, and I called her on the phone and said, "Do you want to make prints?" She was like, "Yeah, I love prints." <laughs> so I just started. Hey. <laughs> I'm teaching at the workshop. <laughs> <laughs> there are visual you know, workshops every summer and uh, writing poetry, prose with drums. All summer long. Yeah. I'm teaching a little more. Yours is I don't want to like. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's That's sure. about Michael Mays. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Michael Mays. Yeah. Yeah. He was. You worked with Mike Mazur out there. I did write with him. I was right. Yes, I've heard a lot of monographs. Yeah. Where we actually like poured and added paint onto wood and let it burn and then printed all this. Like kind of printed all the painting. Was that done in Robinson? Um, yes. Did he he had, uh, Mike Mazur started a, a project called the New Robinson Print Project in the late 80s. Um, that were collaborations? There were collaborations. Bob Townsend was the master printer. Mm -hmm. right. Four artists six summer mm -hmm. for a couple weeks mm -hmm. each and make fully a little And he was also a real mentor of mine too, but mm -hmm. he was very involved with the print the name Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. a question about uh, Thompson. I used to be print for Christian Radio over the years and uh, you know, just thinking about this in their collaboration mm -hmm. and having me come from press a couple weeks ago. And they said that, I was like, oh, it must be great to collaborate with all these artists. And they said, we had brought it more as a facilitator as opposed to collaborator. And it really took me by surprise. She said, I don't know, I'm going to correct you, but it's the way you see it. And I was just curious, the reason we're talking about collaboration, is that an equals uh, relationship, or is it more like you're facilitating, or I don't know if you have any thoughts about that. Because I hear this a lot in printing, but I'll hear when somebody has an artist assistant saying that it's collaborating now. Um, how good that continuum is. Curious about that. It depends upon what the artist wants. If the yeah. artist wants you just to, first of all, you can say, I don't want to do this project because it's stupid. I just spent a couple weeks more of life looking at this thing, I don't think so. You can always say that. But, like, I mean, it's like, you know, um, the artist could just want you to like take this and make a copy of this and walk away. And if you're doing your facilitating it or the way, or the artist could come to the table and say, you know, what you're doing here is amazing. I know the other artists have worked here, we have mutual friends. So let's have fun and see what's going on here. So I mean everything in between too. So and it can start one way and it can turn into the other thing. So um, there's I mean there's tons of models in front of do the printing. And some are just like student assistant, do this, do this, mm -hmm. you know, walk away. And some are a lot more like, I don't know what's this going to look like. And they're like, try it. Mm -hmm. So, sure, it depends on artists. It depends on what it depends artist comes in. Yeah. And it depends also on, like, uh, if it depends on who's publishing it. If you're publishing it, like, sometimes the pressure there is to get it done. If, like, a third party is like, I want you to make a uh, print for this, there's an economic pressure to sort of pull it up faster. And some of it's like, like oh, let's just make two we can do as a make as a journey. And then it's like, you know, just we're going to do this much time on it and not be committed to coming out. It really depends on the, the, the artist and the printer and what the printer wants to do, too. Because they're the getting a piece of crap on this, they just never make a project for themselves. So that's why I didn't see this collaboration with the artists doing the driving project. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's there. That's very much there. Okay. Kind of the setting and presentation, like when I work with Crown Point. Um, yeah, it is more yeah. kind of formal arrangement in a sense. You know, they're facilitating. You'd be like, well, what about trying this or spitfighting this or that? You know, you know, when you're kind of like, you know, just floundering in this kind of array of like different techniques, and there's so many ways to make an itching and um, but you know it ends up being collaborative thought for me it did because I really um, you know I really wanted to talk to the printers about what they thought was going to I mean they're the master printer right so I wanted their opinions about like 
how to, you know, how we make this better as a print, how to stand up as print, as print, as a print. So, you know, like Sam, the manager printer that I worked with there, like he brought in Gabby paper, and that became really important. So that is a collaborative aspect of that. It's also facilitating, but you know, it's his artistic sensibility that's informing the suggestions that he's making, and you know, the interpretiveness of, of the way they work is, you know. I think more than just facilitating. It's interesting actually to hear um, you say that because there's so much part wrapped up in the history of, sort of the collaborative print shop, Crown Point. I mean, I think there is this, this history of, of shops that invite artists in that are typically known as collaborative shops. Um, where printers play, you know, obviously an important role. It's very much the work of the artist that they are there. Um, you know, to help realize that project. Were <coughs> yeah. the crown point the first print shop to include the printer's name in their shop? It, yeah, I think you might be right about that. Yeah. And, they all, and they all get one print from every edition. Mm -hmm. yeah. so there's no yeah. shop there, too. Sometimes. Like I, I remember that famous quote from Augustine about how like when you start to paint, all the words of it go away. Like everything you can't you can't reproduce that in paint in words, but it's and with printmaking you find never happen with, with certain artists where you just like you're not talking at all and you're just they just have it you 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 find an equivalent in that in <coughs> as far as like when you just you're just working and then you make the exact same decisions. Do you think that that is an analogous part? I'm just I'm not trying to formulate how that would work in printmaking like during the well, this, yeah the idea yeah. about the you know, yeah. painting because yeah. a lot of people there's a lot of people a lot of people in your room everybody yeah. leaves. I think I think you do. I mean as the day goes on you get more and more kind of like a singular brain yeah. moving towards mm -hmm. one object. But um, it's, uh, you know, it's a back and forth. Words aren't helpful. Has <laughs> 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 that happened when you really it's all silent and you do the thing and it's exactly what? Well, there's a lot of pointing and doing. <laughs> 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 it's, you know, it's very, you know, yeah. physical grunting. <laughs> yes, I know. Like, um, but you've got to, I mean, you, I mean, you do, you get to this level where you almost have an instinctual sense of, of what's going to happen next. You know, it's very, it is very physical, more than verbal at a certain point. Yeah, yeah there is something there. It's like you're, you're setting all these like processes, these things in motion that take time, like do this, do this, set the paper, roll this out, and then you're just like in the studio together. And then when there's a moment that it always comes out, you both look at it and you spend no time like standing in the same room that you both kind of maybe know the next thing you do. And I'm always lots of time, I'm like, I'm not gonna say it because I don't want the artist to see it. I don't want to be like well, the color purple, you know. Then all of a sudden it's like, oh, purple, we're great on that here. Like, yeah. I was gonna ask too, like, how your did your mind change between processes? Because I know when I make prints, I'm trying to understand how the how the everything contacts the paper. Did your mind change a lot between like lithography and woodcut, or between etching and etching and woodcut? Like, I guess that would be for everybody. Like, you find as far as like as far as how you're approach. thinking about everything about it, like as far as the narrative and the stories, does it change? Like I guess that would be more for the chat about how you make them. So does your mind change a lot between processes? Oh yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, because it's it's you know, you start to see things different after you after you do it. You're doing it all day. Think about how, how like when you make an etching, you're thinking about it one way, and then you make a woodcut. It's completely different. It's, I mean, to me, lithography is just painstaking. You know, <laughs> I, I never have to do it again. Just, <laughs> I actually prefer, you know, like like monotyping or etching, or you know, we recently did a edition of what would you call it? Swishwar. Swishwar prints, and and there are things like. I don't know, I just enjoy it more and it's closer to the way that I think. Mm -hmm. More direct. Yeah, the, those, what's the words you made? Just like, oh, it's like so long. Because I, 
can make these tiny little changes and things. The subtlety is kind of immense, you know. And uh, well, I think I drove you absolutely crazy. Man. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it, it is it is a different mindset. You know, I think there's there's things that lend themselves to a more direct approach. It's more physical as far as you know having something that's actually inside or part of you know, kind of etched, and then, you know, you're drawn, I think you're drawn more to that, you know, your paintings are attacked. Sawing into the place. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's more of like an object. Yeah. It's an object. Anybody else? Oh, I'm not. Um, thank you again, all have participated, and thank you all for having me.